University in Cleveland, Ohio, home of the premier center for flight nursing. I'm going to see if I have what it takes to save a life in the crazy confined environment of a medevac helicopter. I'll be put to the test in the one-of-a-kind Redbird Flight Nursing Simulator. But first, I better learn some life-saving procedures. Good morning. Hi. Dave Konecki. Hey Dave, nice to meet you. Welcome to Case Western Reserve University. Thank you. It's going to be somewhat challenging because you've never done this before, but we can kind of start at the basics and work our way to the flight simulator. Let's get started. Awesome. For basic monitoring, snow over grass, there's no grass, so white right, snow over grass, and then smoke over fire. Okay. And that's all you have to remember. Stick them in first. Stick that right on. Okay. Oh. White right. All right. This one's gonna go on his left arm. Okay, left arm. We are capturing the electrical signals the heart is sending. What we can do in the meantime is we can fill up the venous side with fluid. Okay. Well, we can do that with an IV. Okay. You're in a code and, and you know, the patient needs a lot of fluid. They have this, they have a pressure bag, because the fluid's gonna be out where you can get to it, and all this is gonna be like a spaghetti mess. Now stick that inside there. You wanna get the air out of here, but have a little bit of fluid in here so you can see that it's moving. And we do all this quickly. Start squeezing that really fast. Keep on going until you see green. For the ventricle, it's going to go from a normal sinus rhythm with ST elevation to a run of ventricular tachycardia. Uh, but once you see that run, that needs to tell you, hey, this can get bad. If they're unstable with this rhythm, you need to shock them out of it. If they're talking to you, which can happen, it's not as urgent. But that's a precursor to a life-ending rhythm, which is ventricular fibrillation. Confirm that's truly the rhythm because it could be your lead. So now if you're shocking a guy that just because you put it on wrong is not good. So, so you charge this with the yellow button. Mm -hmm. I'll let you do it. Okay. Charge. charge. So now you should be giving chest compressions right now, but you don't want to do chest compressions when you send 300 joules of energy through. Mm -hmm. And I generally warn the pilots, it's safe to do this in the aircraft, but it's nice to let them know what's okay. coming that you're about to shock this guy. Hit defibrillation, Eight, which is the red one. Each minute you wait in delivering a shock, the percentage, the percentages of him coming back go down drastically. Okay. So you have to shock it, you have to shock it now. Yeah. And if you're not ready to shock, you have to do chest compressions. The teaching for the general public, and if this happens to any of you guys, is to just get on the chest and start just chest compressions only. Forget the rest, just do chest compressions. Right. Your goal is 100 times a minute. So once I've confirmed that it really is not the leads I put on. Um, chest compressions are most important to keep everything right. Um, going. Right. Don't worry about drugs. Don't worry yeah. about a breathing tube. It's chest compressions. Don't be surprised in the real life if you hear some ribs break because that mm -hmm. happens. Mm -hmm. That seem right. Yeah. Okay. And then 100 times a minute. Okay. Why don't we go over the tools we're going to use in our flight bags, and then after that we'll try a real simulation. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Brittany, this is our bag, and this would be all stuff you would need to know exactly where everything is. This is a nasal cannula. This is kind of like if, if you're hypoxic. This is the first move. All right, we call this a non-rebreather. Normal saline. An AMBU bag. This fills with oxygen. This will be the liter pressure bag we need. This goes like this. This is called a laryngoscope. These are oral airways and you measure these, so corner of the lip to about the earlobe. A peep valve, this is glide slope. a glide scope. Oh wait, glide slope for airplanes. <laughs> this is a tourniquet. You can put in a bougie, you can put the tube in directly. This is called a stylet, so this goes inside the breathing tube. Okay. We hook this device up to a drill and we just go right in. Stethoscope, honestly, in our setting, might as well throw it out the window because the helicopter's running and you can't hear can't anything. Hear it, right. Foley bag. So we use this to connect to our chest tube to drain it. These are different IV supplies. If you don't understand anything, just ask. 
Okay. I think when, <laughs> when you're learning, the biggest mistake anybody can ever do is not ask when they don't understand. Okay. Okay, you clear on everything in the bag? Yes. No questions? Not. I have no questions right now. Just trying to take it all in and um, all right. hope I remember the basics. All right, this is going to be your bag, and you're going to need it when we do simulations. So uh, let's get in the simulator. All right. All right, you're here. Yes. This is our simulator. This is where everything happens. Uh, 58 year old man, he has a history of hypertension, diabetes, hyperlipidemia, smoking, and he has a family history of coronary artery disease, and that he's having 10 of 10 chest pain. Also that was going down his left arm. They did do a 12 lead ECG, which this is what it shows. Have at it. So let's get the patient hooked up on the monitor first. Hi sir, I'm Amanda and this is Brittany from the flight team. How are you feeling? I feel something shooting down my left arm. Okay, does your pain radiate anywhere else? No, that's it. Okay. This slides down like this. Okay. And pull that out. Oh. Sir, we're just gonna move you over. A little bit of a bumpy ride. Okay. I'll take it so we can see it. Uh, I can do that. Okay. Heart rate 78, blood pressure is 118 over 77 in the red. Yeah. Your oxygen saturation is 95% on the two liters nasal cannula we put him on. His end tidal CO2 is 38, yeah. which is acceptable. He's breathing at 12 breaths per minute. Um, doesn't look to be in distress right now. At the hospital we just left, they loaded him with aspirin, which is standard for your MI, 325. Yeah. Uh, he received Plavix, heparin bolus. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about that they gave him was a sublingual nitro. With inferior wall MIs, they're very load dependent, so you have the right ventricle, which is like a pump, and you need to make sure that you have volume in that pump to perfuse, and um, right. so it's not impaired and can work, but I would be concerned about the right ventricle being impaired with nitroglycerin being on board. Okay. So we're going to want to keep an eye on um, his heart rate as well as his blood pressure because nitro vasodilates out the venous system, and so that can cause hypotension and the blood pressure to drop. He's a little hypotensive right now, so we're gonna open this up and we'll bolus him the one liter saline in flight, and that should help with the blood pressure. Okay. And that's probably somewhat the effect of the nitro. If for some reason he deteriorates, I will, oh, and he's in VTAC. So I'm gonna, ha I'll do chest compressions and I want you to um, get the pads out. Okay, so he's back. So he's 78. Heart rate 70, right? So I think we sh we're still going to put the or the uh, pads yeah. on. Okay. The patient just told you he feels hot-headed and he doesn't remember what just happened. Okay. And I think we have this. Okay. And if you lift up his arm to get better... Uh... It's there between the heart. Okay, go. Okay, so that's ready. Uh huh. Just and we have case. it hooked up to our monitor. Yeah, just in case. So his blood pressure is improving with the fluids we've given. We need to keep a close eye. Okay. Worry about other arrhythmias. What am I looking for a close eye on the red, right? So heart rate, which is your green at the top, the 78, and then your blood pressure is 109 over 71. And that's how we do uh, okay, that's heart rhythm? Size. Yeah. So when you see that line, that's your VTAC. Okay. The big, wide complex. So he's getting tachycardic again in the 160s and 70s. Okay. So now he's in V-fib, you oh. see, so we need to charge. Yeah, let's... Are we... I'll <laughs> charge. Okay. Okay. And everybody's clear. Okay, clear. And hit the red button. So now... Like, yeah, so it tracked oh, him out of the rhythm, so okay. now we're back to our his baseline rhythm. Okay. You guys did everything right. That's that's the end of the scenario. Except 
and this is kind of like, this highlights everything. You were in charge of the I know, I just didn't actually know where that went. You, I figured <laughs> That's why that. I asked if it was plugged in. So I, I, I heard you, I heard oh. you ask that. Yeah, sorry, I thought it was plugged in. You could have done everything in the world right, but uh, without a plugged in, you'll never deliver any energy. If you were a really student and you should know that yeah, and where it goes, then I would have for sure, you never, the guy would have died on you. Yeah. But yeah, it plugs in here. Okay. And that's the kind of, it also stresses the importance of teamwork. Like, you really rely on your teammate. Yeah. You know, like you got, you trust them that what they do is done. Yeah. This visit was so much fun, but a little overwhelming. I can tell you for sure that flight nurses are awesome and they work in such a crazy intense environment. I think I'm going to stick to the cockpit though. Next, I'm off to Boston to fly with airshow pilot Michael Goulian. 